Once every several hundred thousand years, an extinction level event or trauma will wipe out sentient life. It happened to the dinosaurs, and it happened to every 60s and 70s children's TV presenter at the BBC. It is an inevitability. As the sun set or the tide rises, it's a cyclical beast that we are powerless to stop. In short, Pat Sharp's Funhouse is never coming back, guys. It has lost the aeons of time, only to be revisited through the wonders of nostalgia fueled time travel and rose tinted glasses and all. Deal with it. Modern as a format has its own expiration date, the end of days is coming, and I am a herald for the coming apocalypse. Our time is coming to an end, and this is the 11th hour. Mono Red Tron will be the one to make us pay for our crimes against Bruise. The punishment for neck deckers everywhere is simple. Immolation at the hands of the mighty Star of Extinction. That's right folks, it's time for Mono Red Tron the third. Time to win FNM with a complete turd. Hello boys and girls, I'm Vince, also known as Peasant Kenobi on the internet. I am the Magic the Gathering content creating equivalent of George Clooney's infamous depiction of the Dark Knight. World's greatest detective. They really captured the essence of the character with that particular shot there. Mono Red Tron is an incredibly popular deck because it speaks to us all on a primal level. Emptying our Tron lands into a bane fire and locking onto some poor suspecting scrubs face for lethal is a simple yet hugely gratifying experience. It makes you feel alive, quite similar to twerking in the rain. new to the deck, feel free to pause the video and head down to the description below to find links to Monored Tron The Beginning and Monored Tron 2 Electric Boogaloo. I will also, if I remember after editing this video, uploading it and sorting it all out, to put a link on screen here using one of the cards of YouTube. If I forget and it's not showing up now, can someone in the comment section please remind me because I will more than likely forget. This new iteration of the deck looks to utilise two new cards in the brand spanking new excellent set. Firstly, Primal Amulet. This card looks to make our sorceries and instants cheaper and then once enough spells have been cast, they can flip it and look to double our spells like Paramount's Goggles or Chandra Wood. This gives us access to more doublers to kill our opponents with Banefires and Blasphemous Acts. The next new and hotly anticipated card is Star of Extinction. Many of you tweeted, commented and messaged me when this card got spoiled, thinking of me and thinking of this deck. It is similar in role to that of Blasphemous Act. This sweep allows us to blow up the world, destroy land and dome our opponents for a lethal 20 off of a stuffy doll. And let's be honest, who doesn't like blowing up lands? Is it better than Blasphemous Act? Well, there's only one way to find out, really. On screen, you're seeing the initial build of Mono Red Tron, looking to utilise multiple looting effects in order to charge up our amulets. It also drops some interactivity and an Ugin in order to focus on being a streamlined combo deck, making its control plan significantly weaker. You will see later in the video that I've gone through a few variations on the deck whilst trying to shoehorn in the excellent cards. I'll come to that a bit later and show you another list. Patience my Padawans, for the end is nigh. Once again, thank you to MTGO Traders for sponsoring the channel. If you want to get 8% off your MTGO orders, be sure to make use of my discount code which is GGGETWRECKED, no spaces, for 8% off your PayPal orders. It helps to support the channel and keeps this content flowing. In addition to this, a huge shout out to all my patrons, especially those of the Splicer tier. Your support makes keeping up this content worthwhile, so thank you from the bottom of my cold, dark, land-destroying heart. Well, without further ado, it's time to Tron. You see, the problem is the deck ran into some issues. It turns out that Star is in fact a lot more clunky than our beloved Blasphemous Act is for the majority of circumstance. Excuse the fact that I literally clicked on the wrong land when fetching off an expedition map here in this game. This game exemplifies clearly how Apt can be dramatically better than Star against faster creature based aggressive decks. Even if just one of these copies of Star was an Apt, we could have had a game of magic in our hands, but instead we just died. Star was simply one turn too slow for Merfolk. However, let's not be biased here, let's take a look at another game where Star was actually quite good and got us there. In this next game, I was able to essentially do whatever I wanted, mapping into Tron, playing a Solemn to find the necessary red source, opponents on quite literally the most confusing collection of cards I've ever seen, Telerian West, Temple of Epiphany, and Latest Bloom, and a collection of cantrips. This just all served to confuse me, and I thought it was some weird variant of Storm when I was expecting Dragonstorm or something. We down took a Chandra and cast a Tormenting Voice, turning two cards into four. This feels very good. Our opponent is even super impressed with this. The opponent plays the You Can't Make Me Discard Stuff land, and I am baffled as to what the fuck he's playing. We play a second Solemn to continue our ramp, we then pyrocline 
Plasm are our own sad robots. They exist only to serve, and their existence must be bloody miserable. This draws us two more cards, allowing us to dig for the combo. Our intention is being to combo off before this guy does whatever he's trying to do. Chandra once again nets us four cards off of a single tormenting voice, which feels silky, silky good, like dipping my dick in mayonnaise. We find Doll, which we can actually cast right now in addition to our star, which means he is dead unless he has a counter spell or removal. The reason this showcases star is not, not only did it mean we could go for the kill here and then not have to wait for a double next turn to be played, but it meant he was actually dead to it. Blasphemous Act would have involved having a doubler as well, so the full 20 damage got us there and it was lower in mana. So in this circumstance, Blasphemous Act would have been significantly worse. You see, sometimes star does do the job. <laughs> I was going to explain what the opponent was doing here, actually, but then I decided, actually, no. He, he managed to kill me in game two and three, so he had a distinct game plan that we didn't do too well against. But I thought it'd be more fun to see if you guys know. Comment below if you have any idea what these cards were moving him towards. The first person to get it correct will win a prize, that prize being a blessing from Cat Jesus himself. Welcome to Intermission. So the deck is significantly worse with these new cards, if I'm honest, which is a bit of a shame. I started out Amulet every single game as it's just bad and a complete steaming pile of shit. Perhaps some deck using rituals to storm out might be able to put it to better use. Or maybe even the Mono White Tron deck that I've been wanting to make for a while that I've, I've got in the works. Or heaven forbid, it might even make the infamous Electric Sex Pants Vindaloo the strongest modern combo deck of all time. Damn these Electric Sex Pants! <laughs> The updated version dropped all of the amulets and cut a star for another copy of Act. So we still have the star to bring about the apocalypse and make people tilt at the jankiness of the whole affair. And it's flavorfully and thematically on point. Get it? Because stars. But we have gone back to our old build, essentially. We've removed the faithless looting because I just don't work here. And we've cut the one copy of trash that accompanied that package as a way of generating value. We put Ugin back in and added another hot new four drop from the Kalash block in the shape of Chandra, Torture Defiance. I really have a soft spot for Torture Defiance, especially now that she can be played alongside Firebrand the same time thanks to the new planeswalker rule. It helps to ramp us, dig for a combo piece, close out on life totals, or just kill a problematic creature. She feels like a strong bit player in the deck that can fulfill multiple roles in the 4-drop slot. Unfortunately, she does bump the cost of the deck up a bit in actual real world money, but it's still a budget deck by most people's definitions. Let's go! So we play a fan with an Emrakul profile image. I wonder if they are- oh, yep, of course they are, they're on some form of Eldrazi. Turn 2 TKS incoming, am I right? Oh, fucking hell. Of course I'm right, I'm playing fucking Kenobi. Despite being a fan, or at least knowing who I am, he decides to not dismantle the combo and takes away one of our creatures with his thought not here. This confuses me a little bit. We get smashed in the face for 9 damage on the following turn, I untap, realize Hammer's just too slow to compete in any way with this strategy, and we concede. That was a really bad keep. In game 2, thinking that he's Eldrazi trying to ban Aldrazi, I sight out my Pyroclasm to bring in orbs of warding in order to dampen damage and protect my hand from Thought Not Seer. We have a hand that hilariously does nothing and now Milligan. Then I see Graf Digger's Cage, realizing I accidentally brought it in instead of Python Needle or Pithing Needle, as some of you will correct me in the comments, I'm sure, and feel very, very silly. I joke about this to my opponent, who jokes back about having lingering souls. I discarded the tormenting voice, assuming he was joking. Stony Silence serves to make my only piece of real action terrible, which is. Brilliant. I play a useless Mindstone and find out that he wasn't joking about the Lingering Souls at all. Shit. I use my Buried Ruin to bring back my cage and then deploy it. Our opponent casts the second souls so that my cage ended up being the best accidental good idea I've had since I spilled Lemon Curl on my naked balls at that cat sanctuary that time. It was pretty sexy. We use Tormenting Voice to get rid of this useless trading post from our hand and we hit Orb of Warding, which is great against souls. Cotton Eye Joe takes away our sweeper as he fears the combo. Respect is earned, ladies and gentlemen, not just give them free kids. Remember that. We cast an Orbs and he hits us with TKS and casts a Kambal, also known as Console of the Fuck You Storm LOL. I do the math, we can bane 5 for 12, which isn't enough. A couple of blocks from our doll and a land drop or two should get him into lethal bane fire range. We have to acknowledge and respect that Kambal triggers as that means he has a virtual life buffer of additional 2 on top of the life total we can see in this box here. Our opponent plays a second copy of Stony Science and we block the Thought Lots here and make another Tron land drop. Steady. Steady. Hold, almost there. Our opponent gets cocky and he thought seizes himself, revealing the path he's going to hit our doll with. This shows us smashes that were also stranded in his hand, and then he paths our doll. He hits us for 4 damage in total thanks to the wonderful orbs of warding. We untap and dome him for exactly lethal through the top decking of a land. If he didn't thought seize himself, we would have definitely lost this game with him being on 2 life. Our bane fire would not have been lethal. Great kid. Don't get cocky. We keep a hand with 2 Tron lands in a map. 
Cage has been good for us, and Mindstone both ramps and digs us deeper. Hand is not ideal, but it is capable. We lead Map into turn 2, Stony Silence from him. Looks like he mugged into the Stony. This makes our hand remarkably worse, and I should have thought about that when I was keeping it. He plays a matter of Shaper. We make a land drop and deploy our Cage and pass back. He plays an Eldrazi Displacer, so we deploy Chandra and we kill that fucking thing. Matter of Shaper swings in and kills Chandra. He casts one half of the Lingering Souls. We draw and win the Slower Battle Skull. Sadness is, however, placed onto the stack. The German gets pathed, and we feel bad as we can't equip it now thanks to Stony Silence. Sadness has resolved. We get hit for 5 and we deploy a Staff of Nin. We enter 5p territory and pray that the Staff will dig us into some action or even the combo itself. Our opponent has been missing land drops but unfortunately he lands his 4th land. Staff digs us into Tormenting Voice which in turn digs us into Pyroclasm. We wipe up the onboard mess with it. TKS consumes our useless Mindstone in hand and Staff digs us into a land and a block it in the form of Solemn Simulacrum. Our arsehole is solidly clamped tight at this moment. His hand can only be Creature Removal or Smashes, neither of which is good for us as that means there is an inevitability of him drawing that fifth land and killing us with the haste or just killing whatever we play. Solon goes under the bus and digs us into the Tron. Staff draws us some serious gas here. With Tron online we deploy both a worm call engine and orbs of warding which is a perfect way to turn the corner against an aggressive beatdown plan. We clench and hope for no path. But no, there's no path and he deploys Smasher and he can't swing into this worm coil. We draw more Tron lands and a Stuffy Dar and we're starting to look safe. Back to back Smashers followed by a path would be game over though. Another Smasher from him starts to realise this plan and we play another worm coil that we've drawn thanks to Staff. I consider swinging but I think it's unwise if he top decks another Smasher hit we can't win that race. He slams the third consecutive Smasher. This is a tight corner for us to turn. We aren't quite out of the woods yet. Staff digs into Cementing Voice which then digs us further into Buried Ruin. I keep up Ruin to bring back a dead doll or worm call if he sees a dismember or wasteland strangler from him. He plays a matter of shaper and a strangler and kills our doll, and I end up bringing the doll back to hand with the ruin. I untap, draw a doll, and deploy two dolls at once. However, we're still waiting for that one big red wrath. He plays a TKS and he can't look at our hand due to orbs. We draw into Ugin. We down tick to Blob Stony and equip Batskull to one of our dolls, which feels fucking awesome. For those that don't know, dolls don't actually have Defender. We attack with Vigilance and Lifelink and Indestructible with one of our dolls, ready to turn this game around. He chumps the doll with the Wasteland Strangler and takes three damage from the doll's passive ability. We crack a map and crack a stone while we can. He top decks and plays another stone on his turn, a clear showing of how bad Stony can be against Tron in the mid to late game. We draw a Torch of Defiance and another map to run voice goes digging and finds a banefire at last. We swing with a doll, no blocks. We cast a huge banefire for 24 with no doublers. We fire at our own doll. He has nothing in hand, so this can't go wrong. This means that we get to gain the life and have an even better triumphant victory. This results in the game ending with us on 42 life and our opponent on minus 12. GG get burned. We keep a hand with combo, one Tron piece, some ramp and a map. Our opponent plays mines into map is this the mirror? He then plays a tower. Are we really gonna get out Tron days? Are you gonna have Tron before we Tron and play something and fucking ruin us? A Khan would be awful. Our opponent assembles Tron, plays a Smasher, that's <laughs> more Eldrazi, and plays a Mindstone. We get hit for five and we are on the back foot hugely here. We map and assemble Tron and play a sad little robot. He's the ritualistic sacrifice on the altar of worth here. His sole purpose in life is to ensure that we just get there. Our opponent taps out for a rather horrifying ballista for five. A machine gun bastard for anything more than four just makes him want to fucking wretch and vomit. This is an attempt from him to close the game as soon as possible before we get our game plan online. We chump block the smasher to keep life as high as possible and to dig. We draw us a tower. If there was a Tron god he smiled upon us on this day. We cast the goggles and then double a bane five for five, firing up both of his creatures, the ballista and the smasher. This is necessary to stay alive. We discard a land to smash his trigger. Our opponent appears to be light on gas. He cracks his stone and plays a ghost quarter and takes us off Tron. <laughs> we play Chandra and start to tick up, pointing at his face. He top decks a smasher and kills Chandra with it. We play a worm call engine, or as the Germans call it, Worm Spiralin Machinen. He can't attack into Worm Corn past his turn. We have the opportunity to double a bolt here to shoot the Smasher dead from goggles, but that would cause us to discard all gas in our hands, which feels weak. Instead, we slam in and then cast Blasphemous out. Of course, we don't double it, not even to send a message because it would kill both our Worm Coil and the tokens left behind. Our opponent slams the TKS, and with the trigger on the stack, we double bolt it off of goggles to kill it, and he exiles our Chandra. We draw a different Chandra in draw step, slam it, and tick up to shock our opponent off of a revealed mountain, and we attack with the Worm Twins. 
Our opponent casts an Aura's Dust to kill our Chandra and then casts an Endbringer. We take only with Death Toucher here, so we can't really block it. Setting up a lethal attack next turn with no other blockers from him. He plays the chance on one, then chance on four, showing us that his hand was stranded with crap he couldn't use. We slam in and kill him. <laughs> In game 2 we keep a double Tron piece, double Mind Stone, trading post hand, he turn 1's a map and we draw and turn 1 a map also. He plays a walking ballista and a needle, we crack map in response to casting a needle and get the last Tron piece. He uses his map to go find an Eldrazi temple. He names Chandra, torture defiance off of the needle, we play double Mind Stone and Solemn to utilise mana most efficiently and ramp us further. He plays a smasher and crashes in, we block the ballista and get pinged for 1 instead of letting it damage the Solemn which makes sense. On our turn we slam Ugin and we tick up pointing at his face. He untaps and decides to race the Ugin by dismembering our Solemn and putting himself within Banefire range. The end is nigh children, the end is nigh. Here comes the end, I'm ringing the fucking doomsday bell. Are you ready to get fucking burnt? He puts a second smash out and swings into our face ignoring Ugin, which was a fucking mistake. We untap, we Ugin bolt him and then we Banefire him for 11. GG get wrecked. Basically Mono Red Tron is still a perfectly good deck if not top tier. The latest additions are weak and don't bring much else to the deck unless you're trying to go down some focused combo route. But I don't think the deck's very good there, it's best when you can play some form of control game there as well. You can see from the games here that other Tron and Eldrazi decks that you're better off having control options available and using the big Banefire combo just to close out the game once you turn said corner. Casting Torment and Voice of the Doubler still feels insanely good and it makes my willy engorge with arousement. So I want to hear from you guys, are you sad to hear that Star of Extinction just isn't very good or that the amulet is actually complete and utter dog shit? What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section below, share the video and let me know what you want to see next on the channel. Make sure you're subscribed and click the bell for email notifications when I upload or go live with the stream. And um, if you've got nothing to comment with, don't forget hashtag fuck off John. We'll eventually summon the Leviathan back to our realm and hopefully he'll bring brews and a bag, kind of like Father Christmas on the back of a sleigh with reindeer and shit. Anyway, until next time, remember, you can't cross an ocean by standing on the shore, so strip naked and swim in the sea of life, punch a shark, eat a fucking manta ray, take a piss in the ocean whilst no one is watching, because if that ocean can't handle you at the worst of times, worried, naked and urinating in the cold, then it sure doesn't deserve you at the best of times, genitalia in hand, masturbating to the latest Pleasant Kenobi video whilst crying yourself to sleep at night because the world is a lonely, lonely place. What? Hang on, I, I, I don't actually remember what I was talking about, but yeah, I'll see you all very, very soon.